In this video, I'm going to show you how to create custom chatbots for your websites. I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step process to do this. Usually, websites are composed of multiple pages. You can list all those pages using the sitemap of a website. For example, here is the OpenAI's website, which is composed of multiple links or web pages, and you can actually navigate uh, to another page by simply clicking on it. However, if you want to list all of the uh, pages in this website, you can simply use the sitemap. Now, I simply added slash sitemap.xml and if you access this website or this page, you will get uh, a list of all the pages that are in uh, this website as well as their corresponding addresses. So these are the URLs. In this video, I am going to show you how can you use these individual URLs as a source of information for your chatbot and the chatbot is going to instruct information from multiple URLs uh, in order to create a response for your visitor. So first we will look at the overall architectural diagram for this chatbot and then we will look at the code implementation. So let's get started. Okay, so as I said, the site map uh, keeps track of all the web pages uh, that are linked to your website. Uh, so let's say if you access the sitemap, uh, this is going to be connected to different pages. So let's say you have page 1, 2, 3, and this is page n. So depending on the website, there are going to be a different number of pages, which is represented by n in this case. Now, in order to train a chatbot, we are going to be using a large language model. So it can be either through OpenAI or any of the open source chat uh, large language models out there. In our case, we will take a web page and then divide it into smaller documents. Now, the reason of doing this is that we're going to be feeding this into a large language model. And the current large language models that we have, they have a finite context length. And that means it can process only a small fixed amount of text. So because of that, we are converting each page into several documents. So for example, page one is converted to uh, n different documents, right? Then page two is converted to another n documents and page three is converted into another n documents. Okay, I just uh, fixed a typo. So this is the second document, so that's 2a to 2n. Now, when I'm going to show you the code, you're going to see something called chunk size. So this is basically uh, how many parts or documents we create and each document is going to be a specific length that is going to be defined by the chunk size. Next, we convert, We need to convert our documents into embeddings. Now you may ask, what is an embedding? You know, in order to explain the concept of embedding, suppose that each of the documents that we just created uh, has a chunk size of 1000 tokens. Now embeddings are used to compress this into smaller vectors containing numerical values. So by using embeddings, you might be able to convert these thousand tokens into much smaller vectors. For example, it's going to be float numbers, so it might look like uh, something like probably this, right? And let's say uh, using an embedding vector, we might be able to reduce it into a vector of size three. This is just an example. And the beauty of embeddings is that in comparison between different documents, all your querying is actually a lot easier in the embedding space than the original uh, text or uh, token space. Now, here you see that we converted each one of the documents into an, uh, its corresponding embeddings, right? And then we simply store all these embeddings into a semantic index, and that becomes our knowledge base. So this is basically all the knowledge that you have on your website. Uh, in this specific case, we are going to be looking at FICE index store. So FICE is a vector store created by uh, Facebook Research. It is a library for efficient similarity search and clustering of dense vectors. Now, FICE is not the only option. There are some other options, for example, Pinecone, ChromaDB. Right, so these are different vector uh, stores, and depending on your need, you can select any one of them. Now, so far, we only talked about how you create a knowledge base from your website. Now, one thing to remember is if you add a new website, for example, if you have a blog and you add another blog post, right? 
all you need to do is simply compute uh, embeddings for in this new blog post and append it to your uh, knowledge base. You don't really need to do uh, redo it for everything else. Okay, so we know how to create a knowledge base, but what happens if a user is interacting with a chatbot, right? So this is, these are different steps that we're going to be following. Right? In this case, what happens is uh, if a user is interacting with a chatbot, the user asks a question, then that question will be sent to the embedding API and depending on what API, uh, embedding API you used, uh, for example, you can use OpenAI's embeddings or some uh, other embeddings, for example, GPT-4 or Llama index, right? The same embeddings are going to be used to embed your question or query. Now, let's assume that turned out to be, uh, this is probably, let's say this is the embedding that you get from your question. And these are the embeddings that you have in your uh, knowledge base based on the uh, documents that you have, right? Now, next step is to do a semantic search or similarity search. So what you want to do is you basically are going to take the embeddings of your question and compare it uh, with the embeddings of the documents that you have already stored in your knowledge base, right? So whatever similarity metric that you use, you will get a different ranking. For example, you want to only get the uh, top four uh, similar uh, documents, right? So it will simply return you the embeddings of those four documents. Since we know the indices of the corresponding documents based on the uh, embeddings, you can actually retrieve the actual documents, right? And those documents basically becomes your context. Now, this is essentially the text on which you want to perform your query, right? So next what's going to happen is you would take the documents, that is your context, right? And you simply take the original question and feed these two information into your large language model. And you will get an answer. So the large language model is going to look at the documents that the uh, similarity search found to be similar to the question based on the embeddings, right? So use that as a context to generate answer for your question, right? And as you use it, you get the response back. Now, just to reiterate, there are two main components of our chatbot. First is the embedding, so that is simply used for finding the most similar documents. And the second component is the LLM uh, for generating the response in natural language. Now, depending on your application, you can actually choose any other type of embedding that you want. And uh, the LLM can be any LLM. It can be based on open AI's uh, large language models, or it could be one of the open sourced large language models. You can actually mix and match them as well. So for example, you can use OpenAI's embeddings because let's say they are really good for document retrieval, but you can use another large language model. Let's assume uh, something like GPT for all uh, for generating the natural language response. So I hope this explanation is clear and it explains the theoretical concepts. Next, we are going to look at the code implementation uh, for this chatbot. Uh, now let's look at the code base of how we can implement this. Um, I'm running this on a local machine. In this specific example, I'm going to be using OpenAI both for the um, uh, computing the embeddings as well as for the large language model. However, I have a detailed video on how to do this uh, in uh, using open source tools. I'm going to put a link to that video. As well as uh, I'm going to be creating a completely new video on uh, using GPT for all as your language model and Lama indices as uh, embeddings. So keep an eye out for that video. In the first block, we are simply installing the required packages. Uh, in this case, I'm using, using the FIES uh, vector store. So, so the CPU version, LangChain and OpenAI. Next, you want to set your OpenAI key. Uh, you can find this in your own account. All right, now in order to get your op uh, OpenAI API key, simply go to your account. There is this section of uh, API keys. Sim then simply click create a new API key, give it a name, then create the API key and just copy that key. Next, you want to get a list of URLs, right? If you have your own website, you can use the website sitemap uh, to get a list of all the URLs. In this case, I'm manually providing a list of three different URLs. 
uh, this is just for uh, test purposes so I don't really want to go uh, and scrap all the pages on a website I went to uh, the announcement of three large language models so uh, one is the MPT 7B the other one is the stable LM and the last one is uh, Wukunia right so I actually went to these pages copy those links here this is going to be essentially the database that I want to uh, interact with for example here is the blog post uh, that was released when they were announcing Wukunia right and similarly there are blog posts for uh, Mosaic ML MPP uh, 7B models as well as for stable LM now the reason I chose different website was I want to also show you how you can uh, retrieve the source of information uh, from your model next you want to read data from these URLs right so for that we are going to be using the unstructured URL, URL loader uh, from document loaders in Langchain right so what you need to do is you simply need to pass the list of URLs uh, to your unstructured uh, URL loader and then uh, call the load function on your loader this will give you all the data uh, comprised uh, in your URLs right so for example here I looked at it and these are essentially three different web pages right so for each web page you have a different uh, uh, loader and this shows like the whole uh, text contained in each one of these web pages based on our architecture diagram so far we are just on this step two right so assuming you have a site a map or like a list of URLs we just got here next we need to divide each of these web pages into smaller documents so that we can feed this into uh, our large language model as well as the embedding uh, computation model so for that we're going to be using the uh, character text splitter from text splitter in Langchain right now what is going on here and I want to explain the design choices here so first and foremost we want to divide each one of the documents or web pages into a token size of thousand you know roughly speaking think of a token as a word so first thousand words into one uh, chunk then we are defining an overlap of 200 tokens now there are cases in which overlap is very important to have for example if you are conveying an idea in multiple sentences the la and the last sentence is dependent on let's say the previous sentences right if you simply do a normal chunking without overlap and the last couple of sentences end up in the separate document then at, in th that case it may not be conveying the information correctly that's why you need to have an overlap so that there is continuity of information so in cases where you have temporal dependence of sentences or sequences you want to use an overlap in the cases in which there's no temporal dependence you can uh, ignore overlaps I like to keep it to with around 10% uh, or 20% now I hope this is clear now the last design choice is the separator which are, where we are using new lines so the chunk will end at a new line and uh, it will be divided based on the next sentence then what we do is we take our data so all these three documents right and we run it through this uh, character text split right so as a result we are going to get a number of documents right so you see here uh, instead of just three we actually will get a total of uh, let me see how many documents do we have okay so now we have around 62 documents and uh, this is what you get right so we define like n documents now each one of the page is not going to give you the exactly same number of documents because uh, different pages may context, uh, contain different amount of text okay now if you have seen my uh, previous videos on uh, information retrieval the rest of the process is very similar but I want to go into more details of the models themselves right so, so the next step is to get embeddings and for this case we are uh, using embeddings from OpenAI right so even for embeddings there are a number of different models available within OpenAI so for this specific case we're using the default one 
which is the uh, text embedding ADA002. Using that API, we simply compute embeddings for each of the documents that we created, right? But next we need to store them in a vector store. So for that purpose, we are going to be using the FICE vector store. So what we do is we take our documents and our embedding model, and based on that, we're going to compute all the embeddings and store them in the vector store. I usually write them to the disk so that I don't have to recompute these embeddings again and again uh, because there is an associated cost with it, right? So all you need to do is just uh, dump the embeddings on your uh, hard disk, and then whenever you need those embeddings, you simply read them uh, from the uh, disk rather than computing them again. Now, uh, the next step is to do information retrieval. So that's this whole step of somebody asking a question from your chatbot and interacting with your website. Now, in order to do that, we're going to be using a lang chain's retrieval question answer with sources chain. Now, I'm using this specific chain because apart from the answer, I also want to see where the answer is coming from. Now, in order to generate responses in natural language, we need a language model, a large language model. In this case, we are using a default model from OpenAI. So let's look at this. Uh, the default model is uh, the text DaVinci 003. Now you can also look at some other parameters. We set the temperature. The maximum token is 256, right? Uh, but we can actually change the default models. So let me show you how you can do that. So if you go to OpenAI's uh, website, there are a number of models that you can use, right? So uh, even you have the chat GPT or uh, three point, uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo, right? Now, in order to change the model, you will need to pass another parameter to this function called model name, right? And then you simply define what type of model uh, you want to use. I'm going to keep it to default, but just wanted to show you this is where you can simply change the model name. Okay, so we have our model, we have our vector store. Now we need to create the chain. So in order to create the, this retrieval change, uh, chain, uh, we're going to be calling this function from LLM, right? So that's a large language model. Then you pass the large language model that you're using. Again, it doesn't have to be OpenAI, it could be any other model. And in the subsequent video, I'm going to show you how to do this whole process using absolutely open source models running on your local machine without Hugging Face. Uh, so Hugging Face is another option which you can use, but uh, I'm going to show you a completely different process. I already have a video on Hugging Face. I'm going to put a link to that here. Okay, so we pass on the language model and our vector store, right? this uh, and we create a chain now next when we uh, pass uh, a question to our chain right so for example here if i pass a question it will take the question compute the corresponding embedding then run a semantic search on it right retrieve the documents which are closest to this question right use those documents as a context and then use the open ai uh, llm that we chose uh, to answer our question based on the documents that it found to be the most relevant and give us an answer. So, for example, in this case, I ran this query, how big is a stable LM? The response is the stable LM is available in 3 billion, 7 billion parameter with 15 to 65 billion parameter models to follow, right? So this is the response and then it shows uh, the source as well where it got this information from. So in this case, it's looking at the uh, blog post from Stability AI. So it's one of the link that I provided. The next one that I asked was, how good is Wakunia, right? So in this case, the response is, Wakunia is, a capable, is capable of generating detailed and well-structured answers with high quality on par with ChatGPT, outperforming other models like Llama and Stanford's Alpaca in more than 90% of the cases. However, it has certain limitation, uh, such as not being good um, at task and involving reasoning and mathematics, right? So this is the response, and then it also lists the source. So this is the second blog post, right? And then I asked a question regarding uh, MPT-7B model, right? 
And the answer was, I think it was like, which one is the best, right? So the answer is the best M, uh, MPT 7B model is the instruct model, uh, which was trained on 1 trillion tokens. It's very subjective because there are uh, three different uh, uh, MPT 7B models, right? But again, it lists the source. So this is how you can actually use uh, your own website with OpenAI to create custom chatbots. I wanted to create this very detailed video to walk you guys through a step-by-step -step process, both in terms of how this uh, architecture works, as well as uh, the design choices. I will be creating a lot more content uh, using LangChain and large language models. If you like these kind of tutorials, let me know in the uh, comment section below. Okay, I, I think one last thing everybody would be interested uh, is in the usage. So for this uh, specific API key, I have a limit of $5. I have been playing around with the model, this model for um, quite a while. So like in order to prepare this tutorial, I had to run this multiple times and it has cost me at around 33 uh, cents so far. So it's not very really significant. However, uh, this was just experimentation from my end, right? If you are serving this model on your website and let's say you have a lot of traffic, then the cost could be significant. Now, I think it would be helpful if I can actually show you the pricing. So um, I don't personally have access to a GPT-4 API. So here are the pricing. And this one is pretty expensive. So per thousand tokens, uh, you are looking at 0 0.06 uh, dollars, right? Or six cents per thousand tokens. But if you're using uh, the Turbo version to chat GPT, so you're looking at 0 0.002 dollars uh, per thousand tokens. I think we were using the DaVinci model, right? So that's 0 0.02. I actually should have gone with, uh, yeah, probably. Uh, for some reason, I thought it's uh, less expensive. Anyways, if you are uh, doing question and answer, just use uh, the ChatGPT model. It's a lot less expensive than the DaVinci model that we were using. Now, for computing embeddings, of the uh, your data set so uh, the current uh, pricing is here that's that's actually not bad at all right so what i would recommend is you can uh, potentially use embeddings from uh, openai and then you can run your own uh, large language model such as uh, gpt for all or even wakunya right to create uh, natural language responses so you might be able to uh, reduce these costs I hope uh, this video is helpful. Now, if you have a similar project or anything related to large language model and, and would like an expert opinion, you can actually reach out to me uh, through my email. As always, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Uh, I'll try my best to respond to them. If you want, guys want me to create content on a specific topic, uh, also uh, don't forget to reach out. I would love to do that. Hope you like this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.